you are unmuted. I am? All right. Hi, everyone. Let's see who's joining us today. You're probably getting sick of me with all of these these lives, but you know what? We've got such a big group and I'm hoping that at least some of the content that I'm sharing will inspire some of you, motivate some of you, give you something else to look at, um, you know, while we're in this lockdown period. So yeah, if you are watching today, we are going to focus on some award images and I'm going to share a little inspiration with you where I find my inspiration and I'm going to deconstruct some of my past favorite ones. Uh, and there's only a couple, couple in there with babies. So you're going to get to see some of my other personal work as well, which is going to be fun. So even if you don't ever want to enter competitions or awards, this is still going to be really great in terms of where you find your inspiration and how you can bring an idea and a concept to life, which is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, if you're watching, we've got someone from Portugal. Hi and uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. I always love to see, you know, all the different countries that uh, people are watching from. I know we're all in every single country across the world. We're all going through such a hard time right now and, and seeing everyone come together at the, the same place and, uh, and share ideas and, and compassion, I suppose, is probably the biggest thing right now, which I'm seeing a lot of right here in the group is amazing. I'm just looking off to the side here and reading some of your comments. Yeah. We've got quite a few people joining us so far. We're up to about 30. So good Fantastic. morning, everyone. Hi. Hi in Sydney. Now, I can't see who's leaving the comments. It just says Facebook user on the TV screen that I'm looking at. Um, so if you've got a question, and do you know what? If you do have questions about any of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today, pop it into the group. I mean, into the comments. Dear Kelly. Um, <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, also, I don't know how many of you saw. Uh, I just shared this morning a little bit earlier in the group. It's under the announcements tab, a link to enter and possibly win a two hour online mentoring session with me. I thought I've got a little bit of spare time on my hands right now and what better way to spend it than uh, potentially giving some something valuable to a member in our group. So if you have friends in the group, please tag them and tr let's try and get as many people aware of this as possible so that we, you know, everyone has a chance of, of winning and, and I'm gonna keep doing this every month for someone each month for the next few months, which I think will be um, really amazing. So yeah, uh, make sure you go and enter that and look for it. There's a little video that I've shared under the announcements tab with a link for you to enter. And entries will close at midnight on Monday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, I'll be announcing the winner here live on Tuesday morning, our my time is 10.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time which is uh, right now on Wednesday. So in nearly a week, um, get Amy, those entries in. Amy has requested, um, can you say the word Newfoundland in your Australian accent, please? Which word, sorry? Newfoundland. Newfoundland? <laughs> I always say words wrong. Everything comes out so badly. <laughs> and Garrett has a many blooper reels of me with uh, many bad pronunciations of different words. Creative often. pronunciations, maybe. Yes. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I get many hours of entertainment. All right. So I'm going to share with you to start with a few things that um, judges look for when they are looking at award entries. When they're trying to evaluate where an image should sit within the scoring range. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that they look for and what I take into consideration every time I come up with an idea and a concept before I even start to create my vision board and pull different ideas and things like that together. So if you're looking for some creativity, um, you know, some ideas and some inspiration, this is going to be the live for you. So <laughs> that's gold. Amazing. I love it. Fantastic. All right. And don't forget, oh, how do I keep my props clean and sanitize? Do you know what? We use um, a disinfectant in, in the studio, a spray where we wipe down all of the surfaces. I am not shooting at the moment, so I haven't been shooting since, obviously. Well, actually, I didn't. 
I was away overseas for three weeks and I mm. haven't done a shoot since I came back. And that was just before any lockdowns anywhere in the world were in place. So I was actually in the United States and in Canada. And when I flew down, it was right, it was about a week before any of the lockdowns really, really sort of were put in place all over the world. Um, so I was lucky in that stance since. So I haven't actually done any shoots at all for quite some time. But normally when we are working here in the studio, we use a disinfectant spray on all of the surface. We actually have cleaners that come in once a week to do all of that and clean the floors and things like that. And then with my props, I use a sensitive wool wash for all of my knits and soft fabrics. And, um, and then they obviously uh, get hand washed at the end of every single session if a baby comes into contact with them. And then all of my, my little sort of hand towels and, and towels that I use for supports and things like that throughout the session. I actually use like a, it's like a bleach. It's like a, uh, oh, what do we call it? It's like a, well, no, no it's a it's a washing clothes washing bleach because they're white and so it actually disinfects all of that as well because they often are used to clean up wee and poo and things like that too so I use something a little bit stronger and then obviously put um, a nice softener in there to make them soft for the baby and Patricia has asked will this be saved because it's nearly 2 a.m. where she oh my is god yes, yes please will. go to bed get up you can watch it tomorrow honestly <laughs> all of the videos that we have been doing since the 17th of March are still here in the group. You can find them under the videos tab or under announcements. And Garrett's been gradually uploading those to YouTube as well. So if you go to YouTube and look up Kelly Brown, you'll find me and many, many other videos that we've created over the past few years shared there as well. Um, and we're also slowly adding them to the IG stories as well, if you prefer to watch things there. So yeah, we're getting there, aren't oh, we? Lovely. But IG, you can only upload a video that's less than 60 minutes. 60 minutes for IGTV. And we all know how much I love to talk. <laughs> okay, so um, obviously the first things that we're looking for, like I mentioned, when judges look at a photograph, um, they're looking for certain, certain elements and an image has to meet those, those elements. It has to kind of tick quite a few boxes to get those judges up and out of their seats to get those high scores. And we're talking, you know, golds, gold distinctions. And some of those, you know, I have known photographers that have gone throughout their entire careers and they've never quite achieved one of those gold awards. So it is something to be extremely proud of. They are rare, but they are something that drive you and push you to want to create something pretty damn amazing. So when I'm going through, you know, um, my sort of thought process around creating a photograph, it has to meet that criteria. Um, and I'm just going to go through them here with you. So impact is huge. It has to be something that completely grabs the judge's attention. It has to be different, it has to be unique. So if you are entering a photograph that is similar to something that has been done before, if it looks, um, if it looks familiar in any way, shape or form, to, to something that has been done previously, then it's not going to have the same impact as something that is unique and different. So that's why we're always looking in different places for that inspiration. And you know, when we talk about that, we're talking about the creativity behind how you've constructed and put your photograph together. Now, some of the photographs I'm gonna share with you, um, actually all of mine are single captures. Yeah, all of the photos that I'm gonna share with you um, are single capture photographs. So when you enter different competitions, they're going to have different rules in terms of the categories. And a lot of the categories I enter at WPPI, the portrait categories, they're single capture, which means you can't take different elements from different photographs and put them together in Photoshop. It has to be one single capture. And for me, I think that's what keeps me going from that, that place of creativity. I love to go through that process of thinking, how can I get this in camera? And it's not so much an afterthought, but it's, it's a it's a process and a plan to everything that has to be done before you even click that button, um, which is what I really, really love. So when we talk about creativity, we're looking for something that is completely original and unique and something that does stand out and create that impact. When we're, when we're talking about composition, 
judges want to be taken on a journey. So whether you use different patterns, um, different placements of subjects within the frame, you use different elements to frame the subject within the frame, or you use light to draw the eye and move the judges throughout the image in terms of that journey, that's what we're talking in terms of composition. So for me, it's about how can I keep how can I create the right impact with composition to keep my, my judge's eyes on that main subject and then use all of the other elements within the image to complement the subject, to, to keep you in, within that story and not take you away from the story. So when we think about composition, all the different elements and the way that we place a subject within the frame must complement and draw your eye to the subject, not take you away or be distracting in any way, shape or form. So leading lines, frames, lighting, all of those things are going to, and also posing as well, are going to um, you know, really help in creating the impact that you want from your composition. Um, when it comes to lighting, do you know, gosh, the, the thing that I think I've pushed myself over the years to, to learn more about was lighting because it can create a mood, it, it creates impact, it tells a story, it leads your eye with composition. Light is the most important part of every photograph because without light there would be no photograph. So when we talk about how you use light to enhance and and create different types of lighting to add drama or add softness or create mood and impact. Um, this is what judges are looking for. Okay, so color balance, you know, the different types of tones, and I'm gonna share with you some different colors throughout my photographs um, in a moment of what colors I've used to help sort of complement and create a little bit of uniqueness as well to, to help sort of have that story and I suppose you know, create those dramatic effects. But um, yeah, you can take notes and take screenshots, but again, come back, re-watch this. Um, this is gonna be so valuable for you, even if you don't enter competitions, because do you know what? When we get through what we're going through right now, everyone's obviously going to be taking photographs of their children, their families right now while they can at home, because to, to document every day, to document this time so that we can look back in years and go, you know, that was when we were experiencing a world pandemic um, type thing. But what we need to do right now as photographers is to perfect our craft because the photos that they are taking on their phones are not going to compare to the photos that we can create as photographers. Um, when we perfect our craft, when we learn the skills, when we understand lighting, composition, exposure, all of those things, and, and we create images that tell stories, they're going to have those, that, that they're gonna create that lasting impact, that, you know, that wonderful sort of, you know, ah moment when somebody, um, you know, looks at your photographs. So, well, let's come back here to technical excellence, obviously, when we talk about, you know, perfecting our craft, when we study the, you know, when we, oh gosh, I just get so caught up in this. <laughs> but, you know, when we learn how to create and, and master a beautiful photograph in terms of all of the different elements that I've just talked about, um, when we look for technical excellence as judges, it depends whether or not you are judging an online competition or a print competition. But a print competition, it, the technical excellence needs to be within the capture right through to from the editing to the printing. And it has to all be completely spot on, obviously, to get those really, really high scores. You know, obviously, the focus needs to be pinpoint. The exposure needs to be correct. Obviously, having detail in all of the highlights and the shadows, how you present your print, all of those things. And then we look at, um, you know, photographic technique. We look at posing, lighting, composition, lens choice. Um, obviously, sometimes if you want to create really dramatic effects, if you're shooting commercial objects and things like that or subjects, you know, you might choose to, to use a lens that slightly distorts. But if you're taking a beautiful portrait of someone and there is distortion, um, then it's obviously going to be picked up on. So 
it's not just about you know being able to to look at your histogram and know that you've taken a great shot there is so much more involved in in terms of that photographic technique and that's what we should be striving for every single time we pick up our camera is that technical excellence that we talk about um, storytelling and subject matter for me this is probably what i do love the most and it's about for me it's not about telling a story as such but it's about telling someone's story um, i'm going to share some photos with you that don't necessarily tell stories but when i am creating a photograph the majority of my work basically comes down to the story of the people that own that photograph and they're the people that are in the photograph it's their photograph i'm creating something for them that has meaning that that it's all about them. So every time they look at it, they're reminded of something. And that's when we create something that's of true value. Um, obviously, you know, I do love to tell story. Um, and, you know, I could make up a million stories in my head right now of what's going on in the world and want to create photographs for that. But for me, I believe that every single person in this world has a story whether it's a good story, a bad story, a sad story, whatever it is, everyone has a story. And for me and for my clients that want me to tell those stories, it's a very rewarding, but it's also a very amazing experience to be a part of, to be trusted with someone's story, to create something that you know that they are going to cherish forever. And for me, that's probably what I love the most about um, I suppose what I'm going to share with you now. <laughs> um, Vanessa's got a question. Where would you suggest a newborn photographer to submit an image? I've never submitted one in a competition before. Okay, so there's many different competitions out there that have newborn categories. So wherever you are in the world, um, I'm not quite sure where you are based, but you know, for example, in the United States, there's many competitions over there through the PPA, through WPPI um, that you can enter. You can enter online competitions. If you're in Australia, we have the Australian Professional Photography Awards, and then we have the RISE Awards. But unfortunately, this year, a lot of competitions have been slightly delayed and put off. We were actually supposed to open up entries for the RISE Awards tomorrow. Um, but we have actually postponed that indefinitely at the moment as we know people are going through things and can't shoot at the moment as well. A lot of people like to shoot specifically for the awards when they enter. So we have postponed that because um, we understand that, that not everyone is, is going to be able to enter. So yeah, um, we also, what else is there in terms of entering? There's so many competitions out there and you know what, um, WPPI do online, if you're in the UK, they have the societies have their online comp monthly competitions as well and then they have their big SWPP competition, print competition in January every year as well. Even your image critiques each yes. month, like you, it's limited to 20 each month but I think watching it, everyone makes a lot of the same um, um, mistakes and uh, a lot of people see the same things and can relate to other people's images as well. It's totally. like, I would never have looked at it that way before. Oh my goodness, I've never noticed that. Like, I think uh, being able to go back and rewatch those um, for the ones that are already up there. But well, um, you're in the United States. So I would highly recommend the first half for WPPI. You don't have to be a member, but they have a newborn specific category, but it's single capture as well. And they offer feedback with their online competition. But like Garrett said, my do monthly critiques here in the group and at the banner at the top of the group, you'll see the dates, the upcoming dates for um, our next monthly critiques. But you can also go back through all of the previous critiques that we've done every month for the past 12 months. Um, here in the group, there's 20, like Garrett said, the first 20 images uploaded are the ones that um, are submitted. And I critique those live and go through all of the different ways that they could be, you know, um, slightly improved or, or perfected. Uh, 24th of April is our next image critique. Perfect. That is very, very soon. So yeah, I the day before, I will share a link in the group and it's basically first in, first served. <laughs> but more about that later. Okay, so we've just covered all of those different elements. Now that is what Regardless of whether you are creating something for the awards or whether you are creating something for your clients, they're all the different things that we should be perfecting every day when we pick up a camera. 
we are only as good as our last photograph. And I think that's really important to remember. And it's wanting to be better. It's wanting to take a better photograph. I, some of you might find this hard to believe, um, but every time I pick up my camera and I take a shot, I think, oh yeah, that's good. But then I'll look at it and I'll still find a flaw. And I think that's what pushes me to be better every time. I am always looking at my work going, how can I make this better? Not that it's a bad photo, but it's how can I make this better? So it pushes me every single time to create something that is slightly different. And you know what? Before we start, when you come up with an idea and a concept, write it down. You might create a list like I've got in my phone under the notes section that is so long. You might forget about some of your ideas. You might put that idea off because to create it might be a little bit hard at the moment. Um, or you might be a little afraid to create or try to bring your, your um, vision to life purely because you don't think anyone will get it or you know you think it's great at the time and then you go yeah no no one will understand mm -hmm. do you know what don't worry about what other people think create photographs for you create photographs for the people that are in the photos i'm going to share one in here actually two in here of my children and um, i created those for my kids and they hang proudly on their walls as large prints in their bedrooms and i can tell you every time i walk in i look at them but they love those photographs, which is the most important thing. I don't care if other people don't like them. It's none of my business what they think and it's none of their business whether or not that photo is for them. So create from the heart and create for you and the people that are in those photos. All right, I'm gonna share with you the first photograph. Um, so this one here, this was for a breastfeeding shoot that I did um, a little while ago. And the, the mother of the baby wanted to create something. Her baby was almost 18 months old and you know was starting to sort of wean her off breastfeeding and wanted to remember that moment. So I wanted to create something beautiful. And when I'm working with a client, I ask them to give me some ideas of things that they love. So between the two of us, you know, we have that conversation about what it is that we're gonna create and then I start creating a vision board, which is really important. And I start putting together different ideas and ways that I can, you know, um, craft something, I suppose, that's going to, you know, they're going to love, that's going to suit them as well. So, you know, I often do a little bit of Facebook stalking. I look at people's look and things like that as well. And I try to come up with ideas and, and ways to, to really create something different and unique. Um, but yeah, I was influenced by an artist here. Michelle's probably going to remember the name of the artist, because uh, I can't, and hopefully she's watching, she can put that into the comments of the group. If you can remember it, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Michelle. Um, but I was inspired by an incredible artist, and so I wanted to create something based off that. So this is a single capture. I couldn't find all of the red roses, so what I did was I went out and I just found as many silk flowers, roses as I could in different colours and then I hand painted them so that they would match this particular setup. Um, the dress that I found that she is wearing was from, um, we call it Vinnie's, which is a secondhand op shop, so like the Salvation Army uh, type place. And yeah, I just had some fabric that went through that. And then I had some hair pieces that um, I wanted to create that beautiful, long flowing. Um, oh, it is your son's 10th birthday. Happy birthday to your son. Please do not apologize. You can come back and watch this later um, at another time. Enjoy that birthday though. That's Casey. Ah, okay. Uh, so yeah, and then obviously using the different colors, I wanted to create that impact and that circular kind of structure to keep you within the frame that led you around um, to bring you back into that beautiful moment between um, a mother and her baby. So what I did was I had an A4 piece of paper. You can see those silk flowers there that I've painted um, and I've hand drawn the um the pattern and then i've painted it with just some paint now i am no artist whatsoever but i do love to create things like this so it just kind of gives me a little bit of downtime a little time to relax and then what i did you can see the beginning of the drawing there what i did was i um printed this really large on our printers and if you don't have a large printer you can print your own backdrops um, at local print stores you can order prints online um, you know there is always a way obviously to create these things so yeah for me I took a photograph of this and then we 
um, in Photoshop, we sized it and then I printed it to create a structure. So I'm going to share a video with you now. Garrett's going to hit the play button that is going to give you some behind the scenes. Luckily, I have a very handy husband um, who created this piece with me. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my, my favorite creations and I love being <laughs> able to video it. And it also gives the parents something as well to kind of remember that time from, not just a photograph. All right. So her dress in the photograph is a lot lighter than the final image. And that was probably part of where when I was editing the image, it was standing out too much from the background. So it was, in terms of composition, what I'd chosen to use there in terms of that gown, um, it didn't quite give me the final result that I had visualized. So I chose to darken that down in post-production and, um, and really sort of create that beautiful hanging kind of draped look with that gown. So that was the look that I was going for. But yeah, if I'd left that lighter gown in there, it probably would have ended up being quite distracting. All right, so let's move on to our next image. We still got people watching or are they all going to bed? We do, we've got 55. Oh, hi everyone. <laughs> all right, so this next one's actually a bit of fun. Um, this is another single capture. I, with this, had this idea to create this for my own daughter, Mackenzie, because she was very much into the steampunk and she has this mad obsession with birds. And so the idea was to create this for Mackenzie and it was going to be one of my award entries as I was chasing my, my triple masters at WPPI. And anyway, they ended up changing the rules and you, if you had previously won an award with a particular person in a photograph in the portrait categories, um, the, the, the rule was that you could not enter um, to win another photograph obviously with, with that subject. So the rule's now gone, but it was in place for a couple of years. And so I found that out and went, oh my God, I need another child the same age. And I just so happened to know another beautiful photographer with two gorgeous girls. And uh, this is her eldest daughter. And she also had a love of birds. And I had previously photographed them before. So she was very excited to be a part of this, um, this shoot, which was a lot of fun. So yeah, what I basically did was, in terms of storyboarding, I just went through, um, you know, different illustrators, and I went through Pinterest and looked at different ideas in terms of creating something that was steampunk, and then obviously wanted to come up with something that was a little different and unique. And then obviously being able to use the materials that I had, I went onto the internet and I tried to find as many different ideas in terms of creating that outfit. And so I basically, I found the black pants, I think they were a dollar at um, the Salvation Army, the bustier top as well, I think that was a couple of dollars from the same place. The belt that I've made here was an old bag of mine that had broken. Um, the hat and the goggles, we actually had because Robert and Garrett had actually been to a Cirque du Soleil show and it was very steampunky and they had bought that as a souvenir so I, I was constantly walking past it all the time and then this is just some fabric um, that I bought to kind of tie into it and create a bit of a different look there. So all of the different pieces here I think I spent all up on this entire photograph well actually I'm going I will tell you what I spent before I hired the bird <laughs> that's a different story um, and so yeah I probably spent all up at about $40 on the outfit I already had the hat and goggles obviously I didn't need to go and buy them her hair is her hair the jacket and everything um, and the pants and all the bits and pieces they were all sort of the bit of add-ons add I suppose and then the bird I had to hire that separately purely because um, these are highly trained birds these particular birds um, are actually used to deliver wedding rings in ceremonies so we I'm going to show you a video of the bird in action now because it is um, a lot of fun and we thoroughly enjoyed this shoot Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And she wasn't scared at all of this bird. And everyone got to take turns except for me holding it. I was not a fan. <laughs> I stayed behind the camera. So yeah, it was all about trying to capture the different sort of angles of the bird landing on her hand with the wings out. And, um, and we had it obviously in a closed off room. We had two birds actually he brought along with him. And yeah, we had heaps of fun. But I painted the backdrop myself specifically for that shoot because I wanted those sort of rich warm tones and that texture in the background. And the, the ladder and the stairs, they're made out of old tables and a little bit of PVC pipe that we painted gold to kind of give it that look. That's why it looks a little odd. But uh, steampunky stuff is supposed to look a little, um, a little rough around the edges, which is great. But that's probably one of my favorite images. And um, yeah, I, I, I believe that one got an 80, oh gosh, I can't remember, a silver oh, distinction, I believe yeah, that 86, got. 87. Yeah, which was amazing, right? So very, very happy with that. Okay, um, next image. This one here, this, this is probably, yeah, this one has a lot of, um, I suppose, emotional connection for me because uh, the lady in this is my cousin and we grew up together. We're very similar in age and uh, her little boy, she had to go through IVF to have him. So this was, you know, she never thought she was going to have kids of her own. And it was a very special photograph to sort of, I suppose, capture the importance of him and what he meant to her. So whilst he is the one that's looking at the camera, this is all about her and, you know, that motherhood and being a part, um, you know, of this little boy's life and just how much she absolutely adored him. But isn't he the cutest little thing ever? So I wanted to go with that very sort of um, painterly look. Uh, my inspiration came from art galleries and the embrace and the way that mothers were painted, you know, in Renaissance paintings. So I chose colours, those reds and blues, um, that would be very rich in colour as well, very similar to the paintings here. And then I wanted to frame it in a way that really did sort of capture, I suppose, um, you know, that story and keep you within in the frame there. So it is one of my favourite images and uh, I absolutely loved, loved capturing that. All right. Uh, so this one's my beautiful boy. How are we going? You guys hanging in there? You're enjoying this? If you've got any questions, pop them into the comments, please. Leave me hanging. Okay. Um, this shot, I gotta tell you the story behind this. This is my beautiful boy, Alex. And if you watched the live on Friday or if you've, you've pre, you know, watched it since then, um, you know, he's a bit of a character, but he's, this was when he was a little bit younger. I found an old iPad of his and he was obsessed with paper aeroplanes. I used to walk around the house getting cranky because I would be picking up bits of paper everywhere that you know resembled a, a paper aeroplane or they were scrunched up or you know in the most random places where he had thrown them and I found this iPad and we were going through the old photos and videos of it when we charged it and got it back up and running and it was a beautiful little tutorial he had made of how to make a paper aeroplane and like we're going like when we watched this it was three years prior that he had made this. So we were all looking back at it going, oh my God, this is the cutest thing we've ever seen. He was missing his two front teeth and you know, he was in sort of prep, um, which is the first year of school. And he, oh God, he just, you know, he was just obsessed with these planes. He had books on how to make them and everything. So we wanted to create a photograph that obviously, you know, took us back to that place in time and meant something to him. He still flies paper aeroplanes and uh, we had a lot of fun making this. This is a single capture and the idea I suppose came from when my eldest daughter Georgia came home from school and she said, Mum, um, I've got to do an installation art project. And I was like, what is installation art? <laughs> So we did some research and we found some really amazing um, pieces obviously that had been made by artists from all over the world so I used them as inspiration to create this photograph and um, obviously I found some other bits and pieces of how I would style this and ideas 
and I loved the goggles here and I loved that sort of that that look on his face that was probably what I was drawn to in this photograph and um, and yeah so I've got a video a little time lapse here of how we actually created it and we folded something like 200 paper aeroplanes and we hung them all in the in the studio the background that you can see with the sky that was an iPhone photo that I took from an aeroplane and what I did was I made it really large and I took it, I didn't have a large printer then, um, I took it down to a print shop, a very cheap print shop and I printed it AO size and I do remember the lady kind of looking at me going the resolution's not very good and I said it's okay it's just for my kids and I didn't want to tell her what the project was for and um, it stopped playing I think, is it? That's the end of that video. Yeah. Oh is it? And uh, anyway, so yeah, what we did was we hung fishing line from the center of that and I, you can see I've used grey paper, seamless paper at the top and the bottom just to extend it for the frame and I knew that I was going to be adding in a smoke machine and we found a smoke machine at Aldi for $29. <laughs> um, so I can your son do a live on the perfect paper aeroplane? Oh my God, he would just love that. Absolutely love that. But no, I'm not going to give him the stage anymore. <laughs> oh, that would be classic. Okay, so um, yeah, the final Im image when we were testing, you know, how to sort of position him within the frame. I mean, he looks so little there. That's kind of the idea of what we were going for. And that little red paper plane that's up there in that top right corner, that was something that, you know, I just wanted to be a point of difference. And in the end, I actually chose to remove that in post-production because I didn't feel that it added to the composition. I didn't think that it needed it. Um, and it didn't help tell the story. So that's the final, final photo there. And I used natural light behind me. So this was in my old studio. So I had my big sliding glass doors. So I just opened up the curtains and I let as much light obviously in as I possibly could to, um, to capture this. Um, I've got a question here regarding the mum and bub image. Um, how did you get that type of edit from the previous image, mum and bub? What was the process to create it? So with that, obviously had to light it a certain way to draw your eye in. Let's flick back. All right. So I, I had to light it in a way that created beautiful light across the baby and the mum and light her face as she's looking back at him. I used a reflector on the other side. So this is natural light. And I used a reflector on the other side to help draw that light in. I also um, blocked some of that light from the bottom of the frame um, from the window coming in so that it came down across his little face. And you can see those beautiful catch lights in his eyes. Now, when I was editing this, this is, I mean, a lot of this is in camera. But what I did was I used my, my bland brilliant technique, which you can find on newbornposing.com, and I basically painted in a lot of the highlights and the shadows following the direction of the light. So I brought out all of the detail in the hair and in the fabric to create that beautiful smoothness. And then I just, you know, enhanced those rich blue tones and, um, and those red tones. So yeah, you can find that retouching technique in my award editing and also my bland br brilliant um, tutorials on newborn posing technique. Um, and Alyssa says, a this is such- Newborn posing technique, sorry. Newbornposing.com. <laughs> <laughs> I told you words. Um, Alyssa says, this is such a valuable video. Thank you so much. Did you ever post your creative images from WPPI? From this year? Let's go, yes. I have shared them. You can see some of them on my Kelly Brown Little Pieces page. So there's a lot of my, my work there. You can just go into the photos and have a look. Um, but yeah, a lot of my personal stuff I don't tend to share too much of because it's not about you know, putting it out there for the world to see. A lot of it's very personal as well. So, um, you know, I do share some of it, but not all of it. I create for me, not not necessarily, um, you know, for, for people to kind of ooh and ah over, but I'm sharing a lot of it with you now, and I'm gonna do this again with more images. So I've got, how many more images have I got to go through here? One, two, three, four more images to go through here. And I have been entering awards and doing this for since 2008. I first started entering here in Australia and I started entering at WPPI. My first year was 2012. 
and this year um, I was very, very fortunate enough to, to be awarded my Grand Masters. So I'm kind of at a point now where I'm like, do I keep going? Have I still got it in me? I don't know, because it does take a lot of time and energy to put, you know, into creating photographs like this. But I do love it. I, I can tell you. I don't think you'll ever stop pushing yourself no. and entering those awards ever. So this is another one of my absolute favourite um, images. I was asked by Canon to travel to Perth to photograph the Tucci um, quintuplets for their first birthday. And so they flew me out and they, they wanted me to do a little bit of a tutorial on how you could, you know, capture your own children as well at home in the process. But I was able to create something for myself. So throughout the communication between um, the mum, Kim and myself, we wanted to create an image for her. She has gone through so much. And if you have followed um, her or you know of her, you'll know her story, but she has got a blog. Um, God, I can't remember it, but it's Kim Tucci, T-U-C-C-I. It'll come to me. Something five, um, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll find it. Surprised by five. Surprised by five, that's it. And um, anyway, so she shares a lot of her emotional journey through that. So I wanted to create something for her. Um, when you photograph a woman front on like this, it is a very masculine position to be in. It's a very strong position to be in. Um, and when you come down slightly lower in the frame and you place people a little higher, it, um, it's a, it's, oh God, what's the words I'm looking for? It puts them, you know, it gives them some grandeur. It, it, it basically, you know, elevates them to be of someone of importance. Uh, so I wanted to create something for her with those, these particular babies because uh, she has got three other children as well to show people her strength and if you look at her face she has this look of determination and she is fearless and that was what we wanted to basically create but this was my inspiration. <laughs> um, I found this um, painting and I was like, oh my God, this is it. And it was interesting because when I photographed these little five babies, you know, they don't get out very often. <laughs> so when I walked into the home, I'm six foot tall and they were mesmerized. They, they were just staring at me. They were a little unsure. They, um, they eventually warmed up to me, but they all had completely different personalities, which was based on how I, I positioned them as well. So I've, got, I've basically created here, which you'll see in the frame, um, a triangle from the top of Kim's head down to the little boy there on the bottom left, across to the little one that's standing, I think that's Tiffany, and straight back up into mum. So the way that I have positioned them in the frame and kept it very sort of simple and neutral in terms of colour, it is all about them. So I haven't used other colours that are going to be distracting, that are going to take away from them. Um, and I've placed them in a frame that are going to keep you moving from one subject to the other around and keep bringing you back to mum. So I actually have, I should have shared a behind the scenes photo of this being taken from, from a phone because I think I only had to do one head swap just to get the expression expression right and um, they were all just the sweetest little things but yeah that is um, that was Kim's headshot um, profile shot for a long time on yeah. on social media and it was absolutely amazing and a privilege to create alrighty so let's move on and a lot of you are going to have seen this photo that I created a while ago and if you have my creative live boot camp um, I actually shared the tutorial on there on how to make this particular flower with the pattern of it as well. So I wanted to create something that was a little different, that was a little unique, and I was actually inspired by a photograph in a fashion magazine. So you can see that giant white flower there in the background, and then I've kind of come in and I've traced and followed the lines of the flower and continued the lines behind the... Um, behind the, the model and I thought this is going to be really amazing. So anyway, when I went to Creative Live and I said, this is what I'm creating, I've made it, blah, blah, blah. They were like, oh, you're going to need to get permission from the, that particular company if you want to show this on Creative Live. And I was like, oh, right, OK. <laughs> so then I had to find the magazine. I had to try and find who created the flower. Anyway, I ended up coming across 
um, the company that, that did make it for this particular fashion shoot and it was a digital um, it was a digital flower that they had made in CGI and put it into the background of this particular shot. So I emailed them and I said, you know, I have made this. I actually attached some behind the scenes photos and I attached the finished photo to the email. And the email that I got back was, you actually made it? Physically made it? <laughs> Wow, anyway, they actually wanted a copy of the print and wanted to, to print it and put it up in their offices, which was pretty amazing. So they were amazed that I did it and obviously I got their permission to be able to share it. But uh, the flower is made out of three different types of material. Um, the Because I had to put a baby in there, it had to be soft and it had to be supportive. So the base petals, and it's done in three layers, the base petals are, is three mil foam core. Um, and that's cut out. Now, if I bent that, it could break quite easily. It could snap that type of foam. And then the larger petals on the inside around the baby there, they're actually made out of iron on uh, interfacing that you buy from a fabric shop. So it's the type of stuff that you iron on the inside of collars and things like that to make them really stiff. So it curled as well, which made it perfect for my petals. And then the inside around the baby, those pieces are cut out out of, um, it's, it's actually the rubber flooring that goes under carpets. It's the spongy soft um, foam, I suppose, that goes when you lay a carpet that you put underneath it to give it that cushioning. So I, I had some of that left over from, you know, something that my husband was doing and I basically used that. So when you are trying to create something, you've got to go through that thought process of what materials are going to work, what is going to um, help you know create the form and the structure of the piece that you are making for a lot of my other pieces I will use um, pool noodles the foam that you put in swimming pools the long stick things that are hollow in the middle they're easy to cut easy to mold and shape um, so I'm always looking for, for cheap things that are going to um, have we got a little bit of a problem uh, it was just the audio dropped out a little bit but it was just going fuzzy so we should, oh, be, okay. we should be fine I'll try not to bump it. <laughs> I'll check in my pack, actually. Probably. And yeah, so when you are um, looking for these different materials, you know, it can take a little bit of research based on the idea that you are trying to come up with. So this is where those vision boards are really important because they're not just photos that inspire you to create what it is that you want, but your vision board should also, you know, include things like the different materials um, that, that you're going to use as well to give you the, the different results and, and looks that you're after. So yeah, that was a bit of fun, but I basically, um, that was, somebody asked which tutorial, that was the boot camp on Creative Live, and you can actually print off, it's got all the instructions on how you can print off those pieces and make it yourself. A lot of people, stop moving Kelly. I bet you that's Robert. <laughs> I'm trying to get my mic pack back on. This is nice. <laughs> Everyone, we all know each other here. It's okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's my beautiful flower. I have used that so many times. I have done newborn shoots, sitter sessions. I have photographed a maternity um, session in it. That was part of my fine art maternity class tutorial that we did for newbornposing.com as well so it was a lot of fun alrighty this is my beautiful girl Mackenzie that you all saw on Friday from that shoot so she's about 10 here and we had so much fun making this particular photo but you know for my little Kens she is when she walks into a room she really does light it up and that's why we wanted to create this and have some fun. But she has this wonderful imagination that we wanted to bring to life. So we come up with these different ideas and concepts. I always communicate with the kids how they want to be photographed and I get them involved in the process. So we had a lot of fun making this. Um, but to find my inspiration, when I was looking for something that would help me, I suppose, put into a picture how a person lights up a room when you walk in. Um, that's when I came across these beautiful sculptures, these lanterns. 
and I was like, these are just amazing. And I had purchased um, these inflatable <laughs> Zorb balls, which I'm going to show you for the twins online. And I was like, they would be perfect. I could totally make this work. Anyway, so I had this idea, I found this, I then went away, I went and spoke at a conference and <laughs> overlooking the balcony were all of these beautiful lanterns and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm seeing this everywhere I go. I went from the UK, then I went to Portugal and I was speaking at an event there and then I saw this and I'm like, this is just crazy. I, everywhere I go, I am finding something that's inspiring me to create this particular photo. It just kept drawing me back to this the particular image of Ken's. So I would take photos of it and then obviously print them out and stick them up onto my vision board. Um, and I'd prefer to do visual vision boards because then I can sort of move things around and, and you can do that digitally, but I'm a very hands-on, touchy, touchy-feely type of person. So anyway, when I got back, I'm like, I've got to make this photograph. So this is one of those inflatable Zorb balls that you literally stand inside and you can see here, there's a couple of shoulder straps that you put over your shoulders and the kids run around and bump into each other. They can play soccer, all of that kind of stuff. So I was like, this would be perfect to put a light down on the inside to light it up. So then I had to start thinking about what type of materials could I use to create this, to create that beautiful glow like the lamps had. So I used an old sheet um, over here and I basically went around the entire outside and then I had a heap of tulle that I'd actually bought. Um, we had a garage sale here in, in our warehouse and we had we just called all local photographers to come and get rid of anything, any excess props or photography equipment. It was like a buy, swap and sell type meet. We had 12 different booths and a lady had all of this tool on a roll and I'm like, I could use that. Garrett was like, yes, you could. <laughs> so we bought this tool, I think all of it for about $40 and um, I basically went around the outside and created that look that I wanted um, for the tool. And what I did was, I don't know, are there any flex lights that aren't on? Uh, Could you grab the other flex light for me? I just want to show everyone what it was that I put inside it. So in terms of the light and how I got that light inside the, um, the Zorb ball, I I have these flex lights so you can bend them and mold them, but you could put different types of lights in there. You could put um, a light at the bottom and have it shining up, as long as obviously it wasn't going to overheat or melt the plastic. That's really important when you are working with something like that. But, um, just making sure there wasn't two on there. Oh, <laughs> that's all right, we'll come back to the light, but yeah. When you are lighting something like this, an LED uh, continuous daylight balance light is going to work really well with trying to light the inside of something. But again, safety measures, making sure obviously I'm not going to burn Mackenzie when she's in there and also not going to melt the plastic or set fire to anything, which is really important. So basically, I just created a giant softbox here to go around the light. And then I wanted to create a different look for her. So we gave her a wig and um, underneath the back of the wig here is just a small balloon. Don't worry about it, Garrett. <laughs> it's just a small balloon that I blew up and then put the hair over the top to give it the height um, with this particular wig. And she has the most beautiful side profile, but I wanted her to be very pale like the, um, those lamps and give it that type of look. This particular top, I think it cost me a couple of dollars again from one of those secondhand shops. So I'm always going in and finding bits and pieces that I can use. So um, when I took the shot, obviously lanterns hanging. Um, these were just different little LED lights hanging inside lanterns. And then um, when I went through the process of editing it, I did have it in those warm, yellowy sort of tones. but there was something about it that wasn't working for me and I kept going away from it and this is what I do when I'm editing these photos and I'm like then I'll come back and I'm, then I'll go away and I'll come back and I'll go what is it that's standing out what is it that's not working so when we go through those those key elements of what judges are looking for is the color harmony working 
does it match this particular type of shot? Um, does the, the height, does it, the composition, does all of that work or do I need to make some changes? How can I use the light to draw your eye down to it? So these are obviously all background photographs of um, you know me with phones and things like that and taking a quick snapshot and stuff like that. So when I was lighting it, I needed to make sure that the light was coming down from above across her face. So it was a very direct light onto her. And so that I wasn't lighting the bottom of the frame in terms of my exposure. So all the little lanterns had lights inside them, which you can see that soft glow but the light that was coming down on her face had to be just right. So I had a light up here in the top left corner and that light coming across her face, I also had to make sure that it wasn't gonna overpower the light that was coming from the inside of the Zorb and then the lights obviously that were um, in all of the different little lanterns there. So then in post, I just came in, I, um, I basically just removed the fishing line and I used the smudge tool to create that beautiful sort of soft look on the outside of each of the lanterns and, um, and that ball there. So yeah, a little bit of post-production work in this one, a little bit more than usual, but it was something, it was a piece for her that I absolutely loved creating. And when we think about the different photographs that we want to create with the different look and feel. With her, she has such a wonderful imagination and it, um, it needed to be something that was a bit more out of this world. And so that's why we went down that path. All right, where's our next photograph? Let's move on. We're going to go to our last image. And this was one I actually created recently. There's some members in our group that were actually present when I photographed this. So. This was a concept piece that I did at the Canon Experience Centre in Melbourne and um, it was all about storytelling portraiture and I wanted a, a baby obviously that had a little bit of a story behind its arrival and I communicated with the mum about the story and I learnt so much. It was, it was actually such an incredible experience for me um, as well. So rewind. I did a model call and I then I, I had a, a lovely photographer respond to my model call who I know and who had just had a baby in Melbourne and I, I knew her but I didn't know her so I didn't know a lot about her. Obviously you know you, you know different people in the industry but you don't know a lot about them. So when I kind of started communicating with her and I asked the questions of you know is there anything that you would like to share in you know within the story of what we create and you know it doesn't it can be it can be a happy story it can be a story of struggle it can be a story of pain it can be a sad story it can be anything that you want it to be as long as it means something to you and has some form of importance so when we started communicating about her story wow did she have a beautiful story and it was really fascinating and it was the one story of late that I did really struggle how to tell because there were quite a few different elements within the story that needed to be shared. So when we started to go through the process, um, this is her beautiful little girl and sadly she had lost two, two little girls before her. Um, one of them was named Magnolia and the other was named Lily. So that's where the magnolias and the lilies come from and the the shape of the um, the crescent moons I'm going to move on to now but her they're, they're Greek and her father was right into Greek mythology so she had been assigned along with her sister her own Greek goddess which was so beautiful and hers was Artemis and she is the goddess of the hunt and also known as the goddess of the moon and so when I started to do a little bit of research around Artemis um, it was really quite fascinating. I came across so many different things that I could create. And um, she even wore a necklace with um, the, the symbol on it. And I was like, okay, how do I include that? All of these different shapes and, and obviously the deer and, and things like that. How do you put a baby into this? But how do you create something that is how do you create something that is timeless, that's not going to date as well? 
Uh, now this is a photograph that isn't going to necessarily mean something to anyone else but I know that every time that she looks at the photograph she's going to know exactly what it represents and that's what I talked about at the beginning of this creating something for the people that are in the photographs for that own the photographs um, and it's going to have a significant meaning to them so I started to go through all of the different things when we looked at um, this was part of my storyboard when we looked at how we could incorporate a baby into how I how could I make something to position a baby into any of these shapes and it was kind of racking my head and I was going big I had so many big ideas and in the end I'm I'm like it's staring me in the face so I came across this little Artemis symbol with the two crescent moons and I'm like I could put a baby in there and I have the perfect bowl which was gifted to me um, by, by Natalie Howe when she came to visit me here at the studio and I'm like this is perfect so I had to find out then how I could create something and get it to Melbourne from Brisbane because that's a three-hour flight <laughs> to shoot this live as a single capture in front of 50 people so we had a little bit of fun with this um, I <laughs> Have I got the image in here? I've got the pullback there um, of me, me shooting it, obviously in that, that, that nice small space there. But we'll go back here because when I started to create it, I put the bowl, um, I measured the shape of the bowl and then we created a canvas in Photoshop, just a gray blank canvas. And I found um, Adobe stock images, licensed images that I purchased for the magnolia and the lily. And then basically I reshaped them and, and modified them to put them into the, you know, the outline of that crescent moon to create those shapes. And I dulled them down to sort of like a light gray so that they would match the, the color of the bowl, which worked really well. But we had to figure out, like if I'm shooting it from this far above, um, the, the crescent moons need to be the same size as the bowl and, and we had to measure it all out and then um, we, I put a texture over the back of it, one of my beautiful paper textures and then Michelle using her, you know, her amazing skills in terms of printing was able to print it to the perfect size for me to make a backdrop which was amazing. What is the wall reflector called and the cost? Okay, we'll get back to that one in a moment. Um, so yeah, this was what we printed off my, my large printer. And again, if you don't have a large printer, you can print your own backdrops, um, you know, at, at print shops, print them online, have them delivered. All right, and it's just normal paper, normal sort of um, paper. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a thick, um, proper paper. Okay, so that there is just a piece of polystyrene and these little brackets, this is not in my studio, this is in a studio in Melbourne, so I have no idea the cost, but I know that my sheets of polystyrene are about $30 a piece and they are quite large, they're about two and a half metres high by about 1.2 metres wide, um, so they cost me about 30 Australian dollars where I am and I just basically googled polystyrene um, manufacturer and found someone in my local city which was great and they can cut polystyrene sheets to any size shape you want. All right so um, I just used the one light that's all I could carry with me. I packed this up in a tube and um, and then rolled it out put my bowl on it and wrapped our sweet little baby up and popped her in the center. So yeah took a couple of frames and that was that was pretty much it. So yeah that would told her beautiful story and um, that I think that got an 86 or an 87 at SWPP and a silver distinction, an 85 at um, WPPI. So I was really happy with those scores. But again, I didn't make it to enter into the awards. I made it for the mum and the awards for me are just another way to kind of push myself to make sure that I am creating work that is creating impact, that's creating work that's different, that's it's work I can be proud of. It's, it's unique. It's someone's story. And whilst it's ticking two boxes, I'm making something for them that I know they're going to cherish. And it's making something for me to know that I'm still pushing the boundaries. I'm still creating something, you know, 
different every year I go back to creating pieces like this um, and that's what it's all about pushing yourself finding inspiration you don't always have to look at other photographers for inspiration I find my inspiration someone asked me the other day in terms of styling I find that in homeware magazines Vogue Vogue Living is one of my favorite magazines I don't buy it I just look at it on the shelf in the shop <laughs> um, occasionally I buy one if I really love it uh, and it's got some great ideas, but you know, I, I find inspiration from art galleries and not just paintings. I find inspiration from illustrative um, drawers and things like that. But yeah, it is everywhere. I showed you lanterns hanging in a hotel that can inspire you. You basically just have to open up your mind to see what's in front of you and be inspired by it. What are the possibilities? And I think that's the key here is that We've got to remember that anything is possible. We just have to put our minds to it and do it and not be afraid of what other people will think. And you know what, if it doesn't work and I've created some absolute doozies that have flopped like you would not believe, that's fine, they'll never see the light of day. But I learned from the process. Um, at Christmas time, I did a shoot and it was a massive shoot with my daughter. It was meant to be a single capture. Garrett and I built a room, like a living room in someone's house with a door that went through to another space. So I had to have a particular type of lighting for the living room and then I had to have lighting for the outside space and then it had a backdrop that needed to be lit a certain way. So there were three different styles of lighting going on and then a subject that needed to be running with a smoke machine and leaves flying and it was just crazy. I had this brilliant idea and concept in my head that normally I would have gone, you know what, that's too hard. And then I thought to myself, no, I need to do this. And in the process of doing it, I learned more about my own capabilities. And I pushed myself to learn more about how I could achieve the look that I wanted. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Get your kids, photograph them, come up with some creative ideas and concepts and create work that tell a unique story for the people that are in them. I don't want you to go out and copy everything I've done. Obviously, it's very flattering when people do that, but we are all different. We all see things differently. We all have our own creative genius inside of us. I want you to be your own creative genius. I want you to create work that you are proud of, that you love, so that you do stand out. And that's what it's all about. We have this amazing ability with our cameras when we perfect our craft and we focus on what we want to create and do, I mean, the possibilities are endless. And I think that's what we need to focus on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm done. That was my last picture. I, I went think, through a few. I think everyone's enjoyed it. And even Steph said there, I'd love to spend a day inside your head. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can tell you from experience, Steph, you don't want to go there. Um, not because it's scary, but because it's non-stop. And I think one of the things that a lot of people will get out today is that you never limit yourself. Um, it's all about creating something that you personally have not created before and you're always challenging what it is that you've done. Like, I think if people have a look at the awards that you've entered over the years, you're always one-upping yourself. No yeah. one else, just yourself. So it's always putting, setting a challenge for yourself and, and putting yourself forward. But um, a it's lot of so people true. have been very inspired. And by that's what the thing. Doing. I think a lot of people feel that a competition is being in competition with someone else, and it is not. For me, my images will come up in front of a panel of judges, and I want those trained judges, I, I only enter specific competitions, and I want those trained judges to look at those photographs. And let's go back. Here we go. I want them to see impact, creativity. I want them to look at it and see how I've used all the different elements and the subject within the frame um, in terms of composition to draw their eye in. I want them to see amazing lighting. I want the color balance to, to work with the photograph and, and express the mood that I want it to have. Um, I want to show that I am 
perfecting my craft every time I pick up my camera and I'm exceeding my own technical excellence. I'm always trying to create the best exposure in camera and look at different ways that I can light the image. And when it comes to printing, there's not many people in terms of print competitions um, who actually take the photograph, edit them themselves and print the photograph themselves. And for me, what that means is that I know that I have created that print. When I hold that print in my hand and I look at it under the light, I know that I have created that. There's nothing wrong with having somebody else retouch your photos. You know, Rocco and Cora from Capture to Print does such an exceptional job in that area, which is perfect. But I, wanted, I didn't want Rocco to do that for me. I wanted to be like Rocco, like he's one of my mentors. You know, he's someone that I aspire to be as good as one day and I'm still working on it. So when we look at, you know, what we want to achieve, that's a very personal thing and only you can decide that within yourself. So when you, when you create something, you've got to make sure, does it tick all of the boxes? And I, I also want to give you a piece of advice when it comes to things like this. Be patient. Let your ideas, let your ideas evolve. Don't be in such a rush. Don't come up with an idea and then think you're going to create it tomorrow. Give yourself time to go through the idea, to do your research, to find inspiration from different places and bring it all together. Um, like I said, it is one thing to, to be inspired by something, but it's another to be inspired in a way to take a bit of, bit of what's over here, to take a bit of what's over here, to then come up with your own creative idea and concept. And then don't be afraid if that idea and that concept slightly evolves and changes as you go through the process of creating something. Um, and when you are working on a project, you know, get other people's ideas because what, and I, what, what I do here is I'll come in and I'll say, I've got an idea. Garrett often kind of runs, runs away. <laughs> but, Rolling of the eyes. <laughs> but I will throw my ideas around in the room upstairs Rob, Michelle and Garrett are often my sounding boards and I think it's really important that you have those sounding boards because they may go, their brains may have seen something or know something that could, that instantly resonates with what I'm expressing that could take you on another path to lead you to what it is that you might create. So always be open to different ideas. I have got a lot of different baby photographs that I'm going to share with you during my next um, deconstruct and that's going to be a lot of fun so i plan to do this you know a little bit more regularly but I, I wanted to start today with you know a couple of babies and then something a little bit more outside the box just to kind of kick start this but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it that um, can start to get those creative juices flowing and when you do start to create things it is always exciting so again, if you've joined me, if you didn't join me at the beginning, if you joined halfway through this, I talked a little bit about um, what I shared earlier today, which is a, it's, it's like a competition, um, but you can enter to possibly win or um, you know be randomly selected to win a two hour mentoring session with me online. So I have shared the link, go to the announcements on the, in the group and you will find that link there where you can um, enter to win. I'd love to spend two hours with someone working on their business, whatever it is. That mentoring session can be focused on anything and everything. Well, maybe not everything. There are some things I like to keep to myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, I am going to go. I hope you um, have a great day, everyone. Please look after yourselves. Sleep well if it is nighttime where you are. If it's daytime, enjoy the rest of your day. I uh, look forward to seeing some of your creative ideas and concepts come to life when you share them right here in the group. All right, take care.